So following the study of evolution, um, the way that scientists really use the information that evolution tells us is to sort organisms based on how closely they're related, and that science is called phylogeny. And really what it does is just put organisms together based on how closely they're related. And one of the tools that we use in the science of phylogeny is called a cladogram, and it basically looks sort of like a family tree. And the closer two organisms are on the cladogram, the closer they are related to each other. So you already know how you can tell how closely two organisms are related. We talked about that with evolution. If they're very similar, if you can find a lot of similar characteristics, then they're probably closely related. And if they're not very similar, there's not very many things that they have in common, they're probably not closely related. <clears throat> and we already talked about how these similarities most likely come from a common ancestor that they had somewhere down the way. And so the more things they have in common, um, the more likely it is that they had a common ancestor somewhere along their family tree. So we said that one of the things that scientists use in phylogeny is a cladogram. And the definition of a cladogram is a diagram that shows the degree of relatedness between species. And that degree of relatedness is just how closely they're related. And it's also called a phylogenic tree. If the science that uses it is called phylogeny, you can find the first part of that word there in phylogenic tree. And so cladogram and phylogenic tree are two words for the same diagram. And we're going to be looking at those diagrams here. Now it's important that you know first how to read a cladogram and also how to draw a cladogram. <clears throat> so this is a picture of a cladogram. Um, you can see that we have three organisms, a tuna, a horse, and a human. And then at the side of the tree here, we have some characteristics. And these characteristics are things that some of these organisms have in common and some of them don't. So if we start at the base of the sort of trunk of the tree, and we start going up the tree, we see that the first characteristic that we have is a backbone. And if they put the backbone there at the base of the tree, that means that everything that comes after that point has a backbone. So we know that the tuna, the horse, and the human all have a backbone. Now, if you continue going up the tree from that point, notice that we have the sort of branch that has tuna that comes next. Um, this branch of the cladogram is called a clade. And that's where the word cladogram comes from because it's made of clades. So the clade for the tuna comes right after backbone. And if we keep continuing up the cladogram, we see that the next characteristic is the placenta. And um, since the placenta comes after the tuna on the um, trunk of the cladogram, that means that the tuna does not have a placenta. But everything that comes after the placenta on the cladogram has a placenta. So the horse and the human both have a placenta. We keep going up, we see that the clade for the horse comes next. And so since foramen magnum, which is the hole in your skull through which your spinal cord enters your brain, um, <clears throat> since the foramen magnum is the last characteristic and it comes after horse and tuna, that means the human is the only one of these organisms that has a foramen magnum. So we can see that the number of shared characteristics increases as you go across the cladogram. So at the very beginning, we only had one shared characteristic. As we move up, now we have two shared characteristics for everything that comes after that. And in the end, we have three for everything that comes after that. So our number of shared characteristics increases as we go across. Um, and then up the side of the graph here, we have time. And what this means is that based on the theory of evolution, the more complicated or complex an organism is, the longer it took for it to evolve. So the human here would be the most complex because it has the, the largest number of these um, <clears throat> characteristics. So since it's the most complex, it took it the longest to evolve. So it took the greatest amount of time to evolve. And the one that would have evolved first in this scenario would have been a tuna. So that's what this means. So now we need to look at how to draw a cladogram. So instead of first drawing a cladogram with um, organisms, we're going to start by drawing a cladogram with movies, because that will make it a little more simple to understand. So we have six movies here, and we're going to start by making a chart that tells us which characteristics these movies have in common. So let's look at this chart. We have these movies listed across the top, and the characteristic characteristics listed down the side. So we're going to start out, we're going to put an X in each column 
that the movie has that characteristic. So if there's an X, that, <coughs> that means the movie has that characteristic. So the first thing is moving pictures. Now all of these movies have motion, so we have an X across all of them. Synchronized sound um, means that it's not a silent film. Now one of the movies that we had here, Birth of a Nation, is actually a silent film. So if you look back here, Birth of a Nation is going to probably be the oldest film in this bunch. And it was silent, so um, we don't have synchronized sound. But we do have sound in the other five movies. The next one <clears throat> is color. So if we look back at our movies, we have two that don't have color, The Jazz Singer and Birth of a Nation. So we can go back and we can mark the other four movies with color. Animation is our next characteristic. If we look back, we have one, two, three of these movies that are animated. And The Wizard of Oz, The Jazz Singer, and The Birth of a Nation are not. So we can mark those three movies as animated. And then we had computer animation, and we know Robin Hood was not computer animated, so we can just mark Toy Story and Tangled. And then 3D presentation means it was um, released in theaters as 3D. Tangled is the only one that meets that characteristic. So once we have our table all filled out, we can total the number of X's across the bottom. And what the number of X's tells us is basically how old um, the movie would be theoretically. And this, when you do this with organisms, you may or may not get the right answer, but it should get you pretty close to the right answer. So the one that has the fewest characteristics is most likely the oldest movie. And in this case, it really is. Birth of a Nation is the oldest movie. Um, the second most characteristics would be the second oldest. The one with the most characteristics, Tangled, would be the youngest, the newest movie. And so we can put them in order, basically, from <clears throat> how we could how we could guess that they evolved. So if we put them in order based on numbers, that basically puts them in order based on age. So we can draw a cladogram then of the movies. We would normally do this with organisms, but we can do it with movies the same way. And when we start at the base of the tree, we're going to put the characteristic that they all have in common at the very bottom. They're all moving pictures. So that means everything that comes after that point on the cladogram has that characteristic. And then we know Birth of a Nation doesn't have sound, so we have to put its clade next. And then when we move up to sound, that means that every movie that comes after that point has sound. And then we know the jazz singer doesn't have color, so it's got to come next. And then when we put color as the next characteristic, everything that comes after that point on the cladogram has to have color, and so on. And so we basically put them in order from oldest to youngest. And the last clade always sort of just comes off of the trunk of the cladogram. It doesn't have its own clade. The last one just sort of stays going straight. And that's just basically how they always do it. I'm not sure why that is. Alright, so this is with movies. Now let's look at how this would be done with organisms. So here's, these are some of the things that we look at in cladograms. And so you might fill out a table kind of like this and then total the number of X's across the bottom. And just like we did with the movies, you could put these organisms in order as to maybe how you might predict they evolved in time. <clears throat> and when we're done with that, sometimes it's a little easier to go from the diagram with the X's to a Venn diagram than it is to go straight from your table with the X's to a cladogram. So if you'd like, you could use a Venn diagram to help you kind of make the transition. When you draw a Venn diagram for something like this, you're going to put the outside circle as the organism that has the fewest characteristics in your table. And then the inside circle will be the organism that has all of the characteristics. So the human has a foramen magnum, a placenta, and a backbone. Since it sort of um, <clears throat> overlaps all the other circles, it has all of those characteristics. So sometimes that can help if you need help sort of translating the cladogram before you have to actually draw it. So once you've done that, you can actually draw the cladogram, and this is the one we looked at earlier. And the oldest organism will come in the first clade, and they'll go in order from there until the most complex or um, most recently evolved organism comes last. And you would draw the clades going off in one direction, and put the characteristics um, in between each clade that, that separates that clade from the other organisms. So this is a cladogram.